Welcome to Geocache Adventures with me, Shadow Dragon One, where I discuss geocaching and my adventures with it. Now, before we get started, this interview was recorded by using Zoom and may sound a little bit different than the rest of the podcast. I hope you all enjoy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Geocache Adventures with me, Shadow Dragon One, Amy. Uh, with me today is our first ever guest, Cody, from the Caching with Cody vlog. Welcome. Thanks, Amy. Uh, for those of that may not be familiar with the vlog, could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I got started geocaching uh, this year, actually back in April. And uh, I, I first learned about geocaching uh, through TikTok, of all places. And uh, I, I thought it looked kind of neat. So, you know, I, I've kind of been toying around with the idea of doing a vlog or some kind of a YouTube channel, but didn't really have a subject to do it about. So I figured, you know, geocaching and YouTube uh, kind of went hand in hand to be something fun to do. So kind of got to sink my teeth into something new on both vlogging and geocaching at the same time. Nice. So what are your caching stats currently? Uh, so right now I've got a whopping 208 finds, <laughs> which is uh, pretty low compared to some of my peers uh, that I've met uh, out in the field. But, uh, you know, I, I typically go geocaching on the weekends. Um, so it's, it's yeah. more or less a, a weekend thing for me. But yeah, I've got about 208 finds. Uh, I think I've got about like an 80% find rate on most of the caches I go looking for. Um, Not bad. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's well, slow numbers, slow numbers. I've, I've got 154. Two, I think. So you're a few ahead of me there. So. <laughs> yeah, th those uh, those first early milestones are, are, from what I hear, the the most fun. Yeah, yeah, they it, it's it's very fun hobby to get into. And yeah. Um. So you recently did the Knox County Park District Geo Trail. Is that correct? What it's called? Yeah. Okay, you featured that on your vlog, even. I did. That was a pretty neat video. I watched that one. It was it was very interesting. For anybody who wants to check that out, I recommend it. Uh, so, could you define a geo trail for us? Yeah, sure. So, uh, the geo trail that I, I highlighted on my vlog was actually the first one that I had ever done. Um, I've read about them, and uh, basically, the way that it works is whoever organizes the geo trail uh, either creates or picks uh, X number of geocaches, and um, usually they're they're all related in some way, shape, or form. Uh, after you find and log all of them, uh, usually what happens is you submit the fact that you found them to whoever organized the trail, and they usually provide you with uh, like a commemorative coin um, as a, like a congratulations or like a reward for completing the trail. Um, so usually they're, they're kind of time sensitive. So most people will do like, you know, okay. the first 50 people get the coin or the first 150, however many that may be. Um, this one was actually, uh, which I thought was really cool. Uh, the park district not only organized the geo trail, but they were actually the cache owners who maintained the geocaches themselves. Um, so the park district, you know, maintains the caches, they place the caches, they hit them, and they ran the, the geo trail all, all together. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's a, there's nothing more frustrating than getting to a cache that just has not been maintained at all. Right except maybe not finding the cash at all. That might be more frustrating. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, pretty close. They're pretty neck and neck. They're pretty close tie. <laughs> pretty close tie. So what can you tell us more about this adventure that you had doing this geo trail? Yeah, so it was kind of a, a spur of the moment type thing. Uh, the the geo trail in, in Knox County actually went live on the 4th of July. And uh, I didn't have any plans that weekend. And, you know, I've been on a couple of Facebook groups, you know, trying to get some ideas of some places that I wanted to go. I, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit further away from my hometown, you know, maybe take a little road trip uh, for the day to, to do some caches and, and uh, just happened to stumble across the park district uh, in one of the Facebook groups that had posted and said they were hosting the trail. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, I can go and do this uh, in about an hour or two, you know, there's 11 caches in the geo trail. I figured I can knock it out pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and it was about a two hour drive from my home to get there to the first cache. And uh, what I thought was going to be a quick one hour, two hour type thing ended up being a nine hour uh, adventure from start oh, wow. to finish. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty lengthy. Wow, that definitely kept you busy for the whole day then, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. So definitely a time commitment to do the Geo Trail then. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a give or take, you know, sometimes, you know, the caches are in close proximity to each other. They may all be in one park and you can knock it out in an hour or two. 
um, which was kind of my thought, you know, shame on me for not doing my research ahead of time. Um, but, you know, it was actually spread out from one side of the county to the other. Oh, wow. Um, so I went from, I wasn't able to hike the whole length of the trail, which you can do. Uh, but even with driving from trailhead to trailhead, uh, it still took me about nine hours to find them all. Wow. That's an impressive trail. Yeah. How many caches total were on this trail? Uh, so there were 11 caches uh, on the trail uh, from start to finish. Okay. Decent number. Yeah. So a little more than one cache per an hour. Yeah, something like you. that. And, you know, there was a couple that I ran into that uh, posed to be a little bit more difficult. Um, <laughs> uh, I, it was about halfway through uh, was probably the most difficult cache um, that I went looking for. And, you know, there was some finds right before I got there. So I, I knew because the, the, the trail just went live that the cache was there somewhere. It wasn't going to wander off within an hour of getting published. Yeah. And uh, I was literally wandering around like a chicken with my head cut off in the woods, <laughs> trying to find this cache for at least an hour and a half. Um, wow. And, you know, there were a couple of moments where I just sat there and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm literally halfway through this trail. Am, am I really about to lose it on this cache that I can't find? But and it ended up uh, figuring out where it was at. So what ended up making that one so difficult? Was it just where it was hidden or... Uh, it was actually my pre-assumed uh, notion of what I thought the hint might have meant. Oh, um, yeah. So I was looking for it, and the coordinates were a smidge off, which, which kind of threw me off to begin with. Uh, but then I read the hint, which made me believe that the cache was going to be hanging up somewhere in a tree. Ah. Uh, so that's where my eyes were at for the entire time, I was looking from branch to branch, meticulously going through the bushes because I thought it was up. Uh, when actually it was underneath a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so the complete opposite. I actually had the exact opposite the other day. I was looking for a cache that I thought had to be down low, and it turned up to when I stood up, it was right in front of my face. So. <laughs> those are always the best, and then you're looking at it like, ah, no, okay, there we go. Yeah, those, those preconceived notions can really, really get you, and it can be hard to <laughs> walk back from those and find exactly. a fresh perspective. Oh, my goodness. So the point of the geo trail is to take you to interesting locations, correct? Correct. So what were some of the interesting locations you found on this trail? So th there was some there were some pretty cool spots on this one. Uh, probably my favorite spot uh, was the last geocache, um, which took you to uh, uh, the second largest covered bridge in Ohio. Uh, and the thing was absolutely massive. So if you if you watch my video, uh, the very last cache, uh, there's some drone footage of the bridge, and it's it's absolutely massive. You know, you see you know, Amish buggies going back and forth through it. You know, it's 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 huge. Uh, so that was really neat. Um, there was also a, an old train depot um, that uh, President McKinley actually com campaigned through at one oh, point, wow. which was pretty cool. Um, so they had like a, an old train there with uh, like a caboose and things like that, where the cache was actually in close proximity to that. Okay. Um, you know, some real scenic areas too, right by uh, some the waterfront uh, next to the river and, you know, beautiful trails. Uh, but probably the best part was the covered bridge and the, and the train. That sounds like some interesting stuff on that trail. Yeah. Bit of history there with it. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. I always like finding those little hidden gems when you're geocaching especially when it's the area that I grew up in and mm -hmm. had no clue that a monument or something was there the whole time and right. fun little nuggets to find. Yeah. And that's, that's honestly probably one of my favorite things about geocaching is, you know, especially like even close in my hometown, you know, little back areas at parks and things that are, I had been going to since I was a kid, uh, you know, have these little hidden gems and these uh, old historic buildings and these back trails that I never even knew existed until geocaching took me there. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about it, too. It's really interesting way to just explore any area, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was your favorite cache on this geo trail? My favorite cache... Um, you know, honestly, it's 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 a toss up. Uh, the the one by the cover bridge was was uh, probably one of my favorites as far as the location of where the cache was at. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the cache itself, I have to say probably the one that gave me the most difficulty <laughs> trying to find. Uh, you know, there there was a, a complete sense of relief when I found it. You know, it was very well yeah. hidden, uh, and it's, obviously, it took me an hour and a half to find it. So uh, that one was was probably my favorite. 
What kind of containers were these caches? Were they all similar or did they have different sizes? Uh, that was one of the things that I was really surprised uh, with, uh, especially knowing that they were all placed by the same person, uh, is the caches were all different sizes. Uh, some of them were as small as, you know, little uh, 50 cent size, 50 cent piece sized uh, tins. Um, and they went up as large as, uh, you know, a Tupperware container that could you okay. know, easily fit five or six trackables in it. So it sounds like it had a good variety of caches. Oh, yeah. Were they all traditional type caches or were there different cache types? Uh, they were all traditional caches. Okay. Um, they had a bit of a twist on it, though. So as I mentioned before, the usually with the geo trails, the caches are all somehow related. Mm -hmm. So each of the geocaches along this trail had a QR code on the lid of the cache container. So what you had to do is you had to scan that QR code and it took you to a, a private website that you had to bookmark and you had to read some history uh, about the area where that cache was placed. Um, at the end of the geo trail, you had to then take a quiz and answer questions about all of the different areas where the caches were placed. And that's how you got to claim your geocoin. Oh. So it was kind of a neat twist. They were all traditional caches, but they almost had the kind of that, uh, that earth cache type twist to it. Yeah, that is neat. That's very mm. interesting. So were you able to earn the coin in the end? I was, uh, and uh, I, I was this close to being the first person uh, to finding all of them and getting the first coin, but I came in second, which I was still pretty oh, happy with. Um, pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty close, uh, but yeah, I, I, did find, I did get the coin, I uh, was the second person to get it, so I was pretty happy with that. Oh, that's pretty neat. Did you run into many other cashers while you were out there? I did. I actually ran into a couple. Um, uh, the first cash that I went looking for, uh, ran into a guy. Um, he actually helped me find the first one uh, because I was fumbling around the woods like I tend to do for most of the ones I go looking for. And uh, we spent about a half hour, 40 minutes trying to find it together. And he ended up finding it first. And I was pretty much on his heels uh, throughout the, uh, the entire the length of it. Um, uh, I also ran into a couple. Um, the one that I mentioned was placed by a, an old train uh, mm -hmm. and caboose and things like that. Um, I was on all fours looking underneath this, this massive train and uh, this uh, older couple uh, came up behind me and s scared the Jesus out of me. <laughs> I was like, Would you like an extra set of eyes there, young man? I'm like, Oh geez. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so here we are, the three of us just mindlessly walking around this old train trying to, to find something. So I'm sure that looked pretty suspicious, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I ran into about three or four other geocaches that day looking for it. That's neat. Yeah, it was That's pretty neat. cool. Yeah, I always wonder what it looks like to people not playing when you're searching something <laughs> like that. Like, what is that person doing? And right. Why is that person just uh, hovering around that light post in the middle of a parking lot? What are they, what are they doing? Yeah, why there? are they messing with, why are they on their hands and knees looking in that bush? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I imagine we can be quite the sight for muggles out there. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it sounds like this was a pretty cool geo trail. Yeah, it, it was, you know, I, I have to give credit to the Knox County Park District, you know, they did a phenomenal job uh, organizing it. Um, they also had a, a large list of, uh, of partners that helped uh, fund the whole program. Um, so they, you know, they even had like giveaway coupons. So every cash that you found, you got a, a coupon to get like a, a free ice cream cone at a local ice cream stand oh, that's and, neat. and things like that. So there was a, a lot of community support behind it. Uh, the park district did a phenomenal job hiding the caches and, you know, communicating and setting the whole thing up. It was, it was really good from start to finish. Wow. That's pretty neat. That's, it's really neat to see not just the park, but the whole community come together and embrace something like geocaching. It's, it can, there's a lot of geocachers, but it's such a niche hobby that you either are or aren't, and there's not really an in-between. So to see them come together and embrace something like that, that's, that's really interesting to see that they did that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, a lot of the parks, you know, especially in, you know, here in Northeast Ohio, they embrace geocaching, you know, letting cachers place their containers and things like that. But it's, it's completely different to see, you know, a park district like the Knox County Park District, who just kind of em hugged the whole thing and embraced it, ran with it, placed their owns and, you know, kind of ran with it. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Warning, this part of the show contains spoilers for the cache that is about to be discussed. So in the original recording of this interview, I forgot to read the cache ID. So here you go. GC8VW0V. 
So usually towards in the episode, we do a cash highlight and you have graciously agreed to do the cash highlight for us <laughs> this week, which I do appreciate. Um, so I do have the description here and my goodness, are we're all 11 this lengthy in description? Yes. Yes, they, yes they were. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of good information with it and it, I'll, I'll give them that. They were very thorough. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read the description for everybody here. So it was difficulty rating was 1.5 and terrain was 1.5. The cache was called. It was number 10, all aboard the Bridge of Dreams. Welcome aboard as we collect your ticket to ride on the Pennsylvania Railroad, also known as the Cleveland Arc Ron, I think I pronounced that right, Columbus, C A and C. Railroad that once occupied our three multi-use trails in Knox County. In the late 1990s, Knox County began to explore the idea of taking the abandoned rail beds and converting them to multi-use recreational trails. The project is nearly complete as our trails include the Heart of Ohio, Cocosing Gap, and Mohican Valley Trail, which make up a greater trail system called Ohio to Erie Trail that spans 326 miles from Cincinnati to Cleveland. On your geo trail, you will discover scenic views as county has to offer. The trail features 11 geocaches, which are numbered to follow in sequence. As you visit each cache, we encourage you to become engaged in learning the history of the Ohio railroads and the significance they contributed to the growth of these towns. We hope that you enjoy our 2020 Geo Trail. The Mohican Valley Trail. The 4.5 tr mile trail begins in Danville and stretches to Brinkhaven that ends at the Holmes County line. To search for the 10th cache in our series, travel to 16606 Hunter Road, Brinkhaven. This is another one of our scenic views on the trail which runs along an abandoned right of way of the old Pennsylvania Railroad on the eastern edge of the county. The trail features the beautiful Bridge of Dreams, a 370 foot covered bridge across the Mohican River Valley. It is the second longest in the state of Ohio and the third in the country. Do not be surprised to see the Amish horse and buggy or simply someone riding horseback as the trail is designated for horse traffic. Often you will have to pay close attention to where you step to. The horse hitching posts located at the trailhead are constructed out of the original metal pipe used on the railroad. Take a picture of the Bridge of Dreams and use the hashtag Knox County Park District Geocache 2020. We would love to see those smiles. Bring a pen. There are no writing utensils in the cache to record your name or on the log sheet. Once you locate the cache, grab a trinket and leave one behind if applicable. Our geocaches are handicap accessible, but someone will need to accompany the visitor to aid in retrieving the cache. Record your geocaching username on the log sheet inside the cache and place the cache exactly where you found it. Log your find on the www.geocaching.com cache profile. Please log where you are from. To take, advan to take the adventure one step further and attain the geocoin optional, scan the QR code in the cache box or take a picture of the website link and go on a virtual trip as you learn about each cache location. Here you will find a lot of information about the trail town and what you might have seen on your visit as well as featured hospitality stuff. Unlock the opportunity to receive our exclusive GeoCoin by completing your test, your knowledge, as you scan the QR code at the 11th cache. Obtain a score of 90% or higher to earn your coin. You may retake the quiz too. Be sure to follow the caches in sequence one to 11 and enjoy your trail. So that bridge, that 370 foot bridge, that's the one that you mentioned earlier, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Can you tell us about your find on that geocache? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, the, the cache itself, uh, I don't want to give away too many of the spoilers here. So spoiler alert for anybody that is listening. <laughs> uh, but uh, the cache itself was not on the bridge. Um, it was uh, in close proximity to it, but you had to walk through the bridge to get to it. Okay. Um, and uh, it, was, it was really neat. The bridge, if, if you do watch the video, um, I took some drone footage. Uh, it spanned over a, a, a large creek. It could have been a river. I'm not exactly sure what body of water it was. Um, 
but uh, there was actually a, it sounded like a, a pool party going on down there. So at one point, you know, there was <laughs> the blasting music. I'm pretty sure they were drinking, uh, having a good time down there playing in the water. And, uh, and yeah, they, they were absolutely right. There was probably at least two or three uh, Amish buggies that, you know, went back and forth through there as I was walking through the bridge. Um, so it was, it was really cool to, to kind of see that and, you know, get some cool footage of it. That's cool. And was this one of the, the smaller geocaches or was this uh, the larger Tupperware container? Yeah, this one was actually one of the smaller ones. Uh, it, it was probably about the, uh, about the size of one of those 50 cent piece little tin container type things. And did the, uh, the 1.5 difficulty rating, did that stand true or did it prove a little more difficult? It, it was, uh, it was pretty spot on. Um, I, I kind of had my suspicions as I was walking close to ground zero of where it might be. Um, and uh, I was right, you know, as, as, as we start geocaching, we start getting an eye for those things that are just a, a little off the, that pile of sticks wouldn't normally be there on its own, or, you know, that, that two by four looks awfully suspicious propped up against that log. So the geosense, yeah, yeah. the geosense is kicked in on this one. So I was able to find this one pretty quick. Very cool. Very cool. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the trail? Is this something you'd recommend others to go do? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I would recommend it if you're, you know, in the, the center Ohio type uh, area, you know, stop in and check it out. Uh, make sure you allocate plenty of time to do it. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't do what I did and uh, expect it to be a quick two hour type project. Uh, you know, take your time with it. Um, you know, enjoy, you know, all of the, the well-maintained you know, trails involved in it. You know, it was, it was beautiful. I uh, enjoyed, you know, being in the atmosphere and seeing all the sites just as much as I did finding the geocaches. So definitely check it out. Yeah, this, this sounds like it would almost be a good one to just take a weekend and just explore the area and do the trail while you're at it. Right. You know, in hindsight, you know, that's definitely what I wish I would have done. Um, you know, I could have easily turned this into a, a weekend uh, geocaching project. Very cool. Well, Cody, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this awesome geo trail. Um, in the show notes, we'll definitely have a link to your vlog for anybody that wants to check that out. Uh, I recommend it. There's some cool videos, definitely some cool aerial shots with that drone, especially of that bridge. That was a beautiful bridge. It looks like it's a beautiful area out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also have Cody's contact information for his Facebook and Instagram if you guys want to check him out. Um, we'll also have a link to the Geo Trail, the Knox County Park District Geo Trail as well as some general geotrail information, including how to create your own geotrail. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, Cody, so much for joining us here today. Definitely. Thanks for inviting me. It was a good time. Thank you. All righty. So I think that kind of wraps everything up. Again, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Yeah, definitely. This is, this is fun. This is my, my first time on a podcast. So <laughs> my first interview for <laughs> a podcast. So. Yeah. So uh, definitely uh, shoot me the link after you get it. You've been listening to geocache adventures with me, shadow dragon one. Is there a topic you'd like to hear covered? Do you have a geocache adventure you'd like to share for the cache highlight? Are you interested in being a guest on the podcast? Whatever you have to say, please don't hesitate to reach out and email me at geocache.adventures.podcast at gmail.com or reach out to me at the contact page on the website at geocacheadventures.org. You can also check out the Geocache Adventures merchandise by visiting the store page at geocacheadventures.org. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode.